Now that we've corrected the gradients in all the working images, we can calibrate the color of the RGB image. We're going to do this with SPCC. But before we apply the color calibration, we need to calculate the astrometric solution because this image doesn't have one. We know this because the image readout doesn't show the equatorial coordinates. Remember, we can configure WBPP so that it automatically calculates the astrometric solution of the masters. Because this image doesn't have a solution, we're going to calculate it manually using Image Solver. Because this image has the correct metadata, Image Solver automatically loads the approximate equatorial coordinates of the center, the average date, the topocentric coordinates of the observer, the focal length, and the pixel size. For a precise astrometric solution, we need to use the Gaia DR3 catalog, which we have to configure beforehand in the Gaia tool. Lastly, it's important to enable distortion correction. Now that we've run Image Solver, the image readout also includes the equatorial coordinates of each pixel. We can now execute SPCC because it will be able to find the stars using their equatorial coordinates. First, we create a reference preview of the sky background. We press Control and click and drag the tab to the Region of Interest section of the SPCC window so that it is configured automatically. Now we need to configure the filters. We're going to select the Botter RGB filters. And we're going to choose this option for the quantum efficiency curve because this image was taken with a QHY 600 camera. Finally, we select Average Spiral Galaxy as the white reference. You can see that the correspondence between the image and the catalog is pretty linear. Now we need to reapply the auto stretch. It's extremely important to link the RGB channels after we've calibrated the color so that the STF displays the white balance we've applied. Let's apply the auto stretch. And here are the colors of our galaxy. If we apply it with the channels unlinked, the STF will calculate the stretch based on the statistics of each RGB channel, completely distorting the SPCC results. That's why we must always link the RGB channels after we apply the color calibration. M101 is a spiral galaxy that lies midway between an SC and an SD. This means that it's quite a blue spiral galaxy. To see this, we're going to do a histogram stretch, transferring the data from the STF to histogram transformation. And now we're going to apply a color saturation curve. As you can see, the galaxy is quite blue. M101 is bluer than the average spiral galaxy. The white reference of an average spiral galaxy is midway between an SB and an SC galaxy, but as M101 is an SCD galaxy, the result is a galaxy with a dominant blue color. According to the relativistic color theory described by Vicent Peris in his book Photographing the Invisible, we can display the color in an image in different ways according to what we want that color to communicate. Let's generate a second version of this image to demonstrate this. We create a copy, and for this version we're going to select an SD galaxy as the white reference. In other words, we're going to apply a white balance optimized for this type of galaxy. To do this, we open SPCC and instead of selecting Average Spiral Galaxy, we select SD Galaxy.
This was the result with the average spiral galaxy, and here is the result with the SD galaxy. If we stretch again, and apply the color saturation curves, we can see that using a spiral SD galaxy as the white reference results in a more neutral overall color with more orange and yellow tones in the body of the galaxy, whereas this one is much bluer. The two versions of the image are valid, but each one expresses a different meaning. In the image on the left, the color is relative to a universal white balance, an average that does not really represent the color of this particular galaxy. In other words, in comparison with other spiral galaxies, M101 is quite blue. The image on the right, on the other hand, expresses the colors intrinsic to an SD galaxy. In other words, in the bluish spiral galaxies, if we neutralize that dominant blue color, we reveal the hues at a local level. The same thing happens with the M81 galaxy, which is an SA spiral galaxy. These galaxies are redder than the average spiral galaxy, so if we use the average spiral galaxy as the white reference, the result is a dominant red color. However, if we use an SA spiral galaxy as the white reference, we can neutralize that dominant red color and optimize the other hues in that specific galaxy type. We can now continue processing this image using this color balance, which is optimized for this galaxy type. Music